It's not about motivation. When is the discipline? Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Box Road. Gareth A. Davis, it's Sunday evening. Uh, what a night of boxing last night, Gareth. I thought we'd uh, have a bit of a catch up on it. Uh, which fight stood out for you? Because there's so many. Which one stood out for you? Who made the biggest impact for you last night? Well, Sandy Ryan. Oh, well, well, it's equally Sandy Ryan and Dalton Smith for me because um, I thought, even though I'd heard that that Sandy Ryan dominated their sparring sessions, I thought Terry Harper's experience in the actual fight, she'd be able to keep her off for five rounds and we'd get a fascinating fight. And I just thought she might pip it on points. But I tell you what, the tenacity and relentlessness of Sandy Ryan just really excites me um and having interviewed her the week before i i, I love i love the clarity with which she talks about things she's very one track and i and i think lauren price is going to beat jessica mccaskill and then we're going to get lauren price against sandy ryan in a british blockbuster for women obviously they haven't had loads of pro fights between them but the style matchup is going to be extraordinary. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think it's going to be amazing. But having said that, Dalton Smith's fifth round body shot demolition of Jose Zapeda, for me, just speaks volumes about where he is in terms of his class and potential as a 10 stone fighter in the light welterweight, super lightweight division. Um, you look at um, Zapeda's recently gone. 11 rounds with the likes of Regis Progre. We know how good he is. Um, we know how that lines Dalton Smith up with people like Devin Haney. He's not quite there yet, Dalton, but he, he has given the sign that he is going to world level. We've always thought that about him. Um, I, I, I describe him now like a man with two axes. He chops people down like a tree in front of him, stands there in your face. He's a very strong powerful figure um he's going to get hit a lot more now as he goes up the up the um the the echelons if you like of the ladder up the up the scales of the ladder in the division to elite um but he's a great kid i've thought a lot of him for a long time so really both of those guys I've got to highlight that body shot that he stopped Zapeda with. Sometimes fans look at them shots and think, oh, he was just in that moment. He saw the shot and he took it. But uh, he's just put a video at Dalton and he just shows how good a trainer his dad Grant is as well. I know he's been trainer of the year, but this further kind of cements the quality of training that, you know, he, he, he gets. Uh, they worked on that shot. And if you look at all the pre-fight build-up, it's a video on Dalton's Instagram where it shows that's the shot uh, Grant was telling him to land, you know, when the opportunity was there. And that ended up being the, the fight ender. Look, the amount of work these guys put in behind the scenes, this is happening a lot now. You're seeing people's moves being conditioned and practiced over and over and over again. That's where the clever training is. Obviously, the dance is the dance. And there's erudition within the dance where people are creative and they're using their intuitive fighting skills, their fighting IQ to, to exact what they need to do to execute um, what they need to do in their performances. But um, when, when you see precision like that, it's normally being worked. You know, when you see it in mixed martial arts, well, spinning back kicks and, and spinning back elbows and, and spinning back fists, these don't just come by chance. They come from hours and hours of practice. Don't we always talk about discipline and dedication and perseverance? And that's what these guys do day in, day out. They're not in the gym making a little video and then, you know, pissing off home and doing nothing. These guys work day in, day out. I know what Dalton Smith's like. Talk to anyone. Janae Boston. Um, um, I was speaking the other day to Nicola Bart. Um, who obviously the ballerina with a brain tumor who, who who came back and and boxed I think Friday night. Um, these guys they're, they're all from the same gym. The, the Edwards brothers. There's total dedication in that gym. And Dalton Smith is like the taskmaster. He's like the headmaster. He doesn't want um, a dumbbell out of place when they go home at night. He's a precision disciplinarian, and that's his son, Dalton Smith. He is the son of the father. He's a credit 
to Dalton Smith. Mm. No, it, it's tremendous. It's, it really yeah. is tremendous. Well, I, I mean, being around their family, I think it, it comes down from the grandfather, who was actually a really nice bloke himself. And it's almost like the three generations, they're all very, very similar. So, yeah, credit to Dalton. And then, obviously, everyone's talking about Dalton's next move, and we rarely see Dalton call people out. He's normally, he just, you know, he just lets Eddie do all the talking. But he put it on the line yesterday, and he's, he's, he's demanded Adam Azim to fight him. So, well, the question I've got for you on that is, uh, and I know we're all listening to one side at the moment, but if do you think if Eddie Hearn was promoting Adam Azim and the table's turned, would he be taking a fight like Dalton Smith at this stage? Um, and would there be as much talk? You know, what, what do you think of that? I don't think so, in my view. I think they may take the fight. Adam Azim may take the fight against Dalton Smith. But one of them's going to hit a brick wall right now. And I don't think it's Dalton Smith. Um, I think Smith is more advanced. Um, he's, he's got his man strength now as well. I think Adam, speed as he is, and I mean this with total disrespect, he's still not quite got his man strength yet. And I still think he's a year, year and a half away from that being a blockbuster fight. Obviously, it is a massive fight for British fans in terms of pitching the two men against each other at super lightweight, light welterweight, as I call it. But I just don't think it's the right time for Adam Azim. And I think maybe Eddie would gamble, but I, th I think ultimately I don't think he would. Okay. Um, and a quick word on Ishmael Davis, a guy with uh, an incredible backstory who beat the... Well, I think you know, Ishmael only had one amateur fight. Uh, and for me personally, I thought you, it, it was like watching an American fight, the way his boxing style, his, um, his composure, his judgment of distance. Uh, for a guy with 12, 13 fights, I personally thought it was an incredible performance to beat somebody like Troy, who, you know, who, who clearly came to win. Sorry, say again. Uh, just about Ishma uh, Ishmael Davis, uh, just talking about his performance and how... Oh, uh, stronger and stronger. I mean, it, look... It, it... Again, it, these are guys going from strength to strength. I, I spoke to Liam Davis last night as well. I mean, look at him last weekend. Again, last five, five performances have been amazing. We are seeing the emergence of a new generation of fighters. We, you know, we, we focus on the top end. Well, I certainly do. That's what we, we're kind of, my, my role is to focus on the top end uh, a lot of the time um, without because there isn't space for everyone, but we are seeing a new generation emerge at the moment. We're seeing a new generation evolve and develop. Um, and, and I really do think British boxing is in a really, really healthy place. Um, and that adds to the fact, if I can just say this, mm -hmm. you've seen the quote today, if you haven't, uh, from His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh about potentially bringing an event, Hearn versus Warren, to the UK in September. I love it. I love it. Wembley Stadium in September. They're obviously just discussing it at the moment. But my understanding is the nuts and bolts are being drawn together. This is the fulcrum. Saudi Arabia and the UK, there's a clutch of fighters in America at the moment. But we are so powerful in boxing at the moment. So many great things are going on. And, and, and it's only going to herald uh, more uh, determined and um, elite fighters. And, and as I sent to you last week, my story in the Telegraph about the grassroots with, that you were very taken with. Yeah. I went to Port Cullis House to, as, as a guest of, of Imran Hussein MP, the, the MP for East Bradford, um, and the all-party parliamentary group into boxing, 25 MPs and lords. Um, they're doing great work. They want to get boxing, grassroots boxing clubs, community clubs, on the government, so whoever is the next government, on their sports strategy, officially with funding, because 150,000 participants, 1,055 clubs, 5,000 coaches, it's a volunteer service at the moment. And there's Dr. Deborah Jump, a criminologist who's um, looking into it, doing research into it, it, has found there is social capital, as she calls it, in these clubs. Um, fewer people, young people going into gangs, more dis more respect being found, better well-being, better better uh, mental health for these guys, greater fitness, uh, greater social awareness, want to be educated better. The, the, obviously, boxing is a very tough sport and you can get hurt. And there are sometimes, um, as Imran Hussein, the MP, said to me, 
there are some um, concerns within government, oh, it's boxing, but the bigger picture is that it does great things in the community. And I really do think it's a time to underpin the grassroots at the moment, because we are going to have a great decade, a great 20 years in the sport, in my view. I strongly agree with you there, Gareth. You know, you touched on it there about the 5v5. The weight divisions were announced today. So I'm going to put you on the spot and see if you can quickly just give me uh, A versus B. So the division uh, Frank Warren chose is heavyweight. So give me a matchroom heavyweight versus a Queensbury heavyweight. That's realistic as well uh, for June 1st. The rumours are Dubois Hergovic. Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. Eddie I, Hinch... like that I like that one and I think it's distinctly possible. Okay. Eddie Hunter. Unless they're fighting on, on, on May the 18th, but yeah. But if it's June the first, great. Eddie Hun chose Featherweight. Uh Ray Ford and Nick Ball. Okay. Uh Frank Warren then chose middleweight. Hamza Shiraz and Ammo Williams. Brilliant fight. Um then Eddie Hunt chose light heavyweight. Um Craig Richards and Anthony Yard, or Callum Smith and Anthony Yard, or okay. Callum Smith, yeah, and um, Frank got Ezra Taylor at light heavy as well. Mm. Yeah, but I, 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 if I, off the top of my head, I, I would, mm. but I know that Yard and Boatsy talks are ongoing as well, so, mm. but that's what I'm saying mm. for now. And I believe His Excellency also chose heavyweight division as well. I think that that's what so there might be two heavyweight fights. So that's that's what I've got from the report. Like so Fury, uh Usyk are, are, are out. Um I'm I'm trying to I don't think Matchroom have got any of the heavyweights. Um no, but they're allowed to sign up a fighter. Um I'd say what about Martin Bacoli against Jared Anderson? Bacoli's with the uh, boxer, isn't he? Um, well, I'd love to see Deontay Wilder in a fight. Yeah, I think he's like a free agent self managing at the moment, so could be. Um, it, let, me, let me let me pin up. Um, is it too soon, Joseph Parker, to fight again? Um, and he's with Queensbury as well, Joseph Parker. I'm trying to think who Eddie could, could sign up. Um, There's not many Dillian free agents. White. Dillian White. Yeah, but it's, I, I get the feeling Dillian White and Eddie have fallen out. I don't know. A lot of the recent yeah, interviews. Well, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Fury Yusuf, Joshua Parker, Zhang, Hergovic, Wilder, Cabayel, Anderson, Dubois, Bacoli, Joyce, White and Garnu. Okay. Well, Eddie questioned Dillian's loyalty to him, saying that, you know, he went to... So... Wilder. Okay, that, that that could be. But I think Wilder's fighting um, um, Zhang by the sounds of it. No, but... it's not announced. I do not... Okay. That is not what I... Maybe Zhang. Maybe Zhang. Zhang against? Uh, he could maybe go as a matchroom heavyweight. I don't know. Is he? He's no, not with Frank's anyone. He's signed by Frank. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yeah. Bloody hell. Frank's got a really strong hold on the head. About seven of the top fifteen, yeah. yeah. Clever, very clever move. Um, and the last. Oh, one hang on, hang on, hang on. on. We could get. Oh no, they're both boxer Fabio Wardley and. Um, yes. Yeah. Fabio Wardley and Fraser. It's Fabio. Mm. Fabio's with Dillian, though, isn't he? He is. And, and I like don't. His, know, but yeah. whoever, it'll, do, be, it'll do, be a big fight. It'll do, be a big fight. Do you think Eddie will have regrets not uh, signing up heavyweights like a year or two ago? I know you couldn't, uh, in hindsight, see what was going to happen, how the landscape was going to change. Of course but... he will. I mean, he said he wishes he'd signed Tyson Fury when he weighed 28 yeah. stone. Like even he lot said of... that he never I thought he'd come back. I know I mean, like people like Sol Dakers and um, Joe Joyce. There's, uh, Frank's just seems to have got a really strong hold on that division right now. Frank's got and... the chess pieces to compete with anyone right now. He has um, and, he's got an incredible heavyweight stable. And there's talks of Queensbury apparently um, joining the zone, giving the international rights to the zone. There's suggestions if the TNT deal runs out, they might even give UK broadcasting to 
the zone as well. Do you know when the TNT Queensbury deal runs out? I don't. I don't. Okay. I'd have to speak to Frank about that. I don't really want to speculate on. All right. That. Could, could you see something like that coming together? It is all just a rumor. Uh, no one. I don't think anyone's really said anything officially. But Frank's that... been with everyone over the years. He's had his yeah. own boxing station. So it, you know, if, the, if the right deal made sense, I'm sure he'd go with it. I mean, he, but I think he's got a very strong relationship with with BT Sport, TNT Sport. So yeah, it's a... um, you know, uh, obviously. Eddie Hearn's got a DAZN deal, hasn't he? That mm -hmm. started in 2017, I believe, and is an yeah. eight-year deal. So they just extended. They just extended it by three years in America and Mexico. I think. Yeah. So, so who knows? So, who, who knows? I don't want to speculate on that because yeah. I have not had that conversation with either Frank or Eddie. Fair play, Gareth. I think either way, I think it's exciting times ahead. Boxing, people are saying boxing's dead, but I think there's so much happening and I think it keeps all of us in the job and next week should be fun. Are you going to be that, Wardley Clark? I will indeed. I'll be doing uh, um, a lot of stuff. I'm live on the broadcast as well. Really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to two tremendous fights at the top of the card. Okay. Florian Marku and Chris Congo. Uh, 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 who wins it and why? Yeah. Difficult call. Um could be a fight of two halves and also we get to find out whether Fraser Clark um, has all the stones to be able to uh, dethrone uh, Fabio Wardley from that British crown we, we've had some great British fights recently all British yep. fights really looking forward to this one I, I, I think it's going to be an amazing build-up I genuinely think it, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously looking forward to next week I think it's going to be a great build-up and there's going to be plenty of stuff happening in the week Gareth it's, uh, it's always a pleasure and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll catch up Probably Wednesday, Thursday. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.